Hi everyone, so welcome back to what is uh, part three of my uh, short series, or it may end up being a long series, of videos about the uh, Jerome Callet Super Chops book and video. Um, how all that, uh, my understanding of the system, how it fits into my uh, teaching and, and all such things like that. Um, also, to a degree, I'm just kind of explaining what it says in the book. Um, I actually think that the Super Chops book is one of the the better uh, written of, of Jerry's books. Um, probably the, the Trumpet Secrets is the best one, but it's describing a very different system to this. Or at least it is describing the next evolution in terms of trumpet embouchure relative to this. It's it's quite different. So um, last last episode, um, I was talking about these three images that are on page five of the book. Um, and at the end, I was saying about... Um, about how this is this picture at the bottom essentially um, leads us to an understanding that we may refer to as central lip compression type embouchure. Um, now, the reason I use those words I mentioned before is because uh, is, is that I picked up that terminology from talking with Lee Adams re and from reading stuff that he said on the internet. Now. Um, in some ways, it's in, it's important to to sort of say that you know, essentially, um, this isn't that different from from Bob O'Neill's casual double high C, or at least the results that he that he wishes for people to have from using that that book. Um, there is also um, it's very easy for people to try and draw parallels and conclude that the roll in setup. Um, for the balanced embouchure method could result in something similar to this. Um, I'll show you that again. Now, I chose those words very carefully, which is um, something I, I tend to do when I talk about this stuff. Um, the, the balanced embouchure method does not have an intended, um, I'm going to say an intended outcome in terms of um, you know, design your own embouchure. That's not what they're going after. Um, you know, they, you're trying. It, it's all about. You know, again, that's something I mentioned very recently that the depositing of information into the subconscious, so that your body can figure it out for itself what it's meant to be doing with the lips. But it's worth recognizing as well that um, that one of the things that you're achieving when you do the roll in exercises is you are showing yourself. Uh, what it is like to create more resistance at the aperture, at the, the 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 last physical place where your body ends and the trumpet begins, um, and and in that way, it's it's you've got um, one seed of similar information that is being passed um, to the you know to your to your knowledge, your instinctive knowledge, or to your understanding of how playing works in a conscious way, um, you're recognizing that resistance to the airstream um, increases the air pressure in the mouth, and that therefore gives you a um, higher range of pitches. Uh, I'm really distracted by this creaky chair. I don't really know what the... There we go. All right, let's see if that helps. Hopefully, <laughs> it's got to be bothering somebody else as much as it was bothering me. Um, so, uh, where am I going next? I want to to sort of talk about a few few things in here. Um, so, something that's that's talked about quite a bit in this book, um, which is also mentioned in the trumpet yoga material, is this idea of the the bottom lip moving up over the top teeth. Now, obviously, it doesn't look like that when you play the trumpet. Um, uh, and, you know, then in the description, it talks about how the air has to squeeze um, up on, you know, past the teeth and then upwards and then through this aperture, which is up here by the gum line. And it's an idea that is a little bit wild, and I don't think that um, it's particularly helpful. In fact, I think that uh, I read online once that Jerome Callet said 
that many people who had come across his uh, material were a little bit too obsessed with this idea to the detriment of their playing. It was not really the goal um, that you should be chasing to get the, the bottom lip up and over the top teeth. But what he was, uh, so I think that one of the things he was trying to highlight is that the, most of the arrows in this picture are uh, pointing upwards from, from the bottom lip here. Um, in the text, he talks about how the bottom lip moves upwards and how the chin follows it. Um, it's one of the quotes that I read online on the Trumpet, I think it was on the Trumpet Herald forum, was that um, he, he said to somebody once that if you wanted to play a double high C, what you needed to do was form a fist with your chin and punch yourself in the nose, which is quite <laughs> quite a funny idea. Um, but coming back to the, the lip over the top teeth thing, this is something that was also present in the Trumpet Yoga book because in the 1973 edition, he talks about this U-shaped mouth where you're pulling upwards here. Uh, interestingly, though I will um, emphasize completely unrelated, if you watch videos of, of Wynton Marsalis from uh, when he was younger, when he was playing on a Bach trumpet, um, you can see that he has a vertical movement with the uh, with the uh, corners of the mouth. The, the the corners move upwards as he ascends in pitch. I'm not going to. I wouldn't dare draw stupid conclusions from that or suggest for a second that he has any um, awareness of this of, of of that. I don't think he plays like it anymore. Um, but it isn't. It's also something that you can observe in Sergei Nekaryakov. Um, the only thing that I will say is, um, is that they are not doing this and they are not doing that. Um, and that's the thing that's, that's probably, that's leading me nicely into this, um, uh, one of the points that I really want to make in this video, but, um, When you do the the unfurled lips, even as an isometric exercise, this this business from the trumpet yoga book. If you, I've got, um, I've got a. Uh, in fact, I'm going to go and grab it. I've got an old first edition trumpet yoga book with with some really high quality photos in it, and one of them is of Jerry Callet doing exactly that. And I'll go and grab it now. So in this uh, in this book, this is the book here. Um, they this is it's in near perfect condition, and I'm so glad about that. So the thing is that um, yeah, Jerry's face is clearly quite different from mine, but this is his unrolled lips, and what he observes in this book is that uh, when he is playing with the unrolled lips. Ah, no, it's not in this book. So it's um, in the later editions, like the um, the 1986 version is is uh, um, very, very similar to the 1973 edition. And I, I wonder a little bit if it was a bit of a marketing thing to bring out two books in two years. And that's the only reason that the 86 edition exists. But it is the one that's pirated the most on the internet. So, um, <laughs> true story. If you... Um, if you look at the pictures in that book, he actually has one where he is doing the unfurled lips. And then he pulls them apart at the side for you to see that the, 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 bot the bottom lip is up over the top teeth. Um, now, I think that this is an interesting observation, but it is not what you should be trying to do when you, when you play. Um, at least in as much as it shouldn't be your the primary goal of your of your um, when you're thinking about if you are practicing in a way such that you are trying to um, learn these movements of the embouchure as you ascend in pinch, then um, 
You shouldn't be concerned whether or not the, the bottom lip is up over the top teeth. It's just something that will probably happen when you relax your corners and, and push up with the chin. On that topic, I've got I'm, I'm, <laughs> so many tangents. On the VHS tape, one of, I, I um, sat down one day and, and transcribed the, a couple of the lessons that, that Jerry gives to people. And one of the sentences that really stuck in my mind was he says that the, the lower lip should ascend and descend like opening and closing a window. Now, I imagine that he's talking specifically about an old style sash window where it's literally moving vertically upwards and downwards. Um, I think that in this picture, in, in reference to that, the reason that there's a downwards arrow on the top lip is twofold. First of all, we're not trying to do this sort of sneer thing. We don't want the top lip to become compressed and pushed out the way. And so it has to push down, um, you know, applying equal and opposite force to that of the bottom lip. Um, and then there's also talk as well in the book and on the video of um, the, the lips gripping inwards. Excuse me for not having shut my messenger off. The, the lips gripping inwards against the teeth. And that's an idea that you can directly apply later on to TCE because the lips are then gripping against the tongue instead of the teeth. And it's something that's much easier for most people to achieve. Um, in, in terms of a, a technique that you can practice. In fact, when you look at the Master Super Chops material from 2007, um, that's how he describes it, is that the, 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 there's the forward tongue between the teeth and the lips grip against it. And he talks about the bottom lip being your control, um, stamina and range as the bottom lip grips against the tongue. Um, that might differ slightly from the latest uh, teachings, which would which talk more about the tongue pushing forward. But I honestly believe that it's the same thing, just observed from the opposite direction. So um, as you push the tongue forward into the bottom lip, the orbicularis oris muscle will will tense and result in the lips gripping the tongue. Um, so it's up to you which way you think about it. That's a little bit off topic because we're not talking about that. We're talking about super chops. Okay, so what I wanted to say in in this video um, was was basically that um, from as as a person who goes out in the world telling people that they are an embouchure teacher, um, what I actually mean by that is, is based almost entirely on my understanding of this method. Now, when people approach me um, and they say, I want to have TCE lessons, I teach them the TCE system, which I've outlined in previous videos, which includes exercises um, of the Einsetzen, uh, Einsetzen and Zetzen pedal, pedal tone exercises. Um, I teach them the spit buzz and I teach them the forward tongue anchored on the bottom lip, how to build up strength in the tongue using Bob Civiletti's five articulations exercises. Basically, all of this is covered in my two books. The, the uh, seven bugles is the, the five articulation stuff, the TCE system, and the uh, pedal tones is in the exploring the double pedal register book. Um, and so that's that's a path that we go down. And generally speaking, what we need to do is get to a point where people find this material challenging. And that's what you have to practice to get better. Um, but I think that this super chop stuff is really important because um, it's giving us some fundamental principles. And I, I, maybe the one of the most important sentences that um, I've quoted to pupils a lot, which doesn't which in fact, is not how I would explain the TCE at all. But um, sorry, maybe if I if I wasn't going round in circles, I would be making more sense. Let, let's stick on topic. So, as an embouchure teacher, essentially what I am doing is I when I observe somebody playing, is I'm I'm playing a, a game of a classic game of good old same or different 
in relation to these pictures. The majority of people are doing this. A lot of people are trying to do that. And then this is what I do at the bottom. Um, and um, so when I meet a trumpet player and I look at them and the playing, you can recognize this immediately. And so you can say to them, you know, the reason that you're playing is different is because you do this and I do that. And in some ways, you know, that's too much information for a lot of people because I can say that because I have done, <laughs> I've done all these things. I've done this. I've tried to do that. And I now do this at the bottom. So, um, that's, you know, th there's a wealth of knowledge in this, this little page of doodles, but it has to, it has to come from somebody who, who understands what they all are and why one works and why the other one doesn't work. Obviously that's all in the text that's in the book. And, <laughs> one of those things when you when you um, go down the path of embouchure change is that you you really have to put a lot of trust in the teacher, um, and you know that's something that, that I think Jerry Callet was really good at, at getting was was people to trust him because he could do stuff that you can't, um, and, and you know I meet trumpet players and I can usually I can do things that they can't. Um, and the, a lot of them wouldn't really believe that it's all just about um, about embouchure, because most modern brass pedagogy is 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 just focused on air, and it's just focused. Maybe it's focused on tongue level, maybe it's focused on, you know, note production, but in a completely different way, um, airflow, um, you know, mouthpiece buzzing. Um, not a lot of talk about sound, and certainly not in the way that this is taught. Maybe I'm maybe I'm just sort of. Um, throwing out uh, baseless uh, baseless uh, criticisms here but the thing is that a lot of teachers out there are not teaching the trumpet they are teaching music to people who have trumpets um, that's my experience of the, of the majority of teachers that I come across and so when I try to talk to them about what they teach or I try to talk to their pupils about what they've been told by their teacher in reference to how to use the lips and the tongue they, they, they will tend to say nothing they say oh we don't do any of that we just we just have to pass ABRSM exams because that's the only reason to play music isn't it to get some UCAS points or something. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Um, let's not get derailed. Um, the point was that as an embouchure teacher, that's essentially my first port of call is to look at people and go, are you using unnecessary effort in your face? Are you using the wrong type of effort in their face? But here's the kicker. This is the thing um, why a lot of people would be wasting their money by um, having lesson after lesson after lesson on this stuff is that I cannot change the way that you play. I can tell you what is better. I can, sh I can show you what is better. I can tell you what is worse, but it's you that has to observe your own playing, um, observe, you know, develop awareness of how it feels to play, develop awareness of, and, and be honest with yourself about how, where, you know, how and when things fall apart for you. So one of our universal principles for the, for the super chop system is that you must develop your lower and middle register first. And you should not be attempting to play high notes until the lower and middle, middle register is working. Now, generally what I will find when I teach people TCE or any general embouchure um, principles is that they will be playing really well up to of in the lowest two octaves of the trumpet and as soon as you go one note higher they start doing weird shit excuse my language but you know that you'll notice that everything will change and i think that what happens maybe this is a, a really important point that needs to be said is that you start to feel physically that the resistance is not there you start to feel weak because maybe you're stretching your top lip you start to feel that even if you were to blow twice as hard, it wouldn't make any difference. And actually people will blow hard and the lip will collapse into the mouthpiece. The resistance will go even more. They'll add more mouthpiece pressure, all of this stuff. You basically have to just watch yourself fall apart and choose not to do it. Um, and it's difficult, but that, that's all we've got. That's also what makes the super chop system really hard, really inefficient to teach. 
Um, and that's why I think that maybe you know learning the TCE is is in in some ways easier because we just have a clear thing. This is what you practice. This is what you're aiming for in terms of um, of sound and how it should feel, how it should look, and um, you know the, I think that in many ways all of all of this stuff is bypassed because you get it from doing the Einsets and Ansets and exercises. Um, you don't really get it from watching yourself in the mirror and trying to force your lips to move in the opposite direction. But anyway, um, I think I've managed to uh, ruin <laughs> most of this talk just by um, by getting a little distracted by by certain ideas. But I, there's so much to there's so much to to unpack here that I want to I want to come back to to some of that. Um, we are making forward progress. Um, and let's, um, yes, we're making progress. I mean, I am explaining things that I wanted to explain. Um, but it's just a matter of, of making sure that I don't forget certain key things, um, that I know I haven't mentioned yet. So there's your little cliffhanger for, for episode, uh, so for part four, um, of, of this series of episodes about super chops and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.